Hey, everyone. Welcome to Plants and Politics. I have an update to share about one of Trump's capital insurrectionists. It's time for an episode of Where Are They Now? Matthew Bledsoe was arrested. Patrick Montgomery was in court. Jonathan Manapa will stay in federal custody. No, I don't take responsibility at all. Jeffrey Smith is a 34-year-old Army veteran. He was living with his parents in California when he took part in the Capitol attack. He's now since moved out of state, thankfully. Smith was seen in photos and videos inside the Capitol on January 6th, and he walked through the building holding his camera up in the air. So he was taking videos of the entire attack. He then shared photos and videos, as so many of them did, on social media And he sent some to people that he knew. Well, one person who is said to have grown up with Smith received text messages from him, which read, quote, I'm a patriot and I stormed the Capitol. Smith also told that person that his intent was to, quote, send a message that Americans aren't going to take a fraudulent election. And he wrote, quote, there is not a way in hell I was going to drive 38 hours from San Diego and not walk right through the front of that Capitol building. Well, on January 12th of last year, Smith was interviewed by the FBI and he admitted that he entered the Capitol. He also admitted that he deleted his Instagram account after January 6th. He claims that he did so because he was receiving threats because of his involvement in the Capitol attack. Um, Smith was then arrested on January 27th and he was charged with the standard four misdemeanors entering restricted building or grounds, two counts of disorderly conduct, and one count of parading or demonstrating in a capital. On October 28th, Smith pleaded guilty to the parading charge, and he was looking at up to six months in prison, five years of probation, up to $5,000 in fines. Well, Smith's attorney was asking for probation only and community service. He argued that When Smith arrived, there were already hundreds or thousands of others inside the building. The doors were wide open. So, you know, blah, yada, yada, yada. He felt like he could just walk in. Well, the prosecutors said, no, we want five months in prison because they told the judge what Smith shared in text messages after the attack showed a lack of remorse and, quote, demonstrate a possibility for future violence. He also apparently deleted his January 6 photos and videos because, as they say, quote, he believed they were incriminating. So he knew he shouldn't have been in there. He knew, at, at least after the fact, that it was wrong and that it could incriminate him. And yet he's texting people still bragging about it. Um, In addition, prosecutors explained that Smith wasn't just one of these people who casually walked in, you know, took a few photos and then walked out. While he was in the building, Smith actually joined others in moving iron benches. There had been benches that were placed in front of a, a set of doors by the police in the interior of the Capitol. Well, Smith and some other people moved the benches because they wanted to allow another large mob of people into that area. So there were three officers who ended up sandwiched between Smith and this group of insurrectionists and these doors. And apparently one of the officers ended up being injured. And eventually Smith and all of his buddies won. The doors were open. So additional you know, massive groups of people, this mob came in and the prosecutors say that within that additional group of people, there were, quote, violent members of the Proud Boys and Oath Keepers who were dressed in full battle gear like they were going to war. And they say that Smith, when these people came in, quote, gave a victorious fist pump And then he was directing people to the third floor. And that's apparently where the Senate and the House galleries are located. So he's telling people, you know, to go where the action is, where they can get to the lawmakers. And prosecutors also said that Smith joined in with others in antagonizing officers who had been standing guard outside of a hallway that led to the office of Nancy Pelosi. Smith allegedly told the officers to, quote, stand down. And then he threatened, quote, we're getting in there one way or another. Um, Also cited as a basis for a strict sentencing was an incident on a flight 
This apparently happened after the, the January 6th attack. Prosecutors told the judge that Smith, quote, became so belligerent that the airline had to call in police. And evidently this whole thing was due to his refusal to wear a face mask. Um, so he wasn't arrested, but the officers did have to remove him from the plane. And this also, I believe, was a guy who was accused by his ex-wife of some sort of violent action, or for some reason, I think she had to get a restraining order against him, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, clearly this guy has a massive sense of entitlement. I believe the judge in this case was Robin Merriweather. That's the only name listed on the court docket. Anyway, the judge sentenced Smith to 90 days in jail, two years of probation, and 200 hours of community service. He was also ordered to pay the $500 restitution fee that we keep seeing. However, Smith's sentencing has been delayed until March 15th because there's now some question as to whether or not these defendants can be sentenced to both prison or jail time plus probation. Um, You guys may recall I brought this up in another case in which a judge stated that he couldn't sentence a defendant to both. I thought that judge was crazy, but apparently January 6th defense attorneys have now raised this issue with the courts, and now the Department of Justice has gotten involved, and they're trying to determine the legitimacy of what is called a split sentence. So what that means is, apparently, when a case involves a petty crime, it's not typically allowed for a judge to impose both jail time and a a sentence of probation. The judge has to choose between either jail or probation. Again, only for petty crimes. It's not for like violent crimes. However, prosecutors are saying, no, 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 there's this 2009 appellate decision that concluded that there's this carve out in the federal probation statute that allows for these split sentences. And they say, yes, it is in fact legitimate and legal. So it appears that the judge in this case wants to wait until a final determination is made on that issue before Smith's sentence commences. So I will let you guys know as soon as the final decision is made, because this could unravel dozens of sentences of January 6 defendants. Um, In regard to Smith, though, I think this should be the standard, you know, this 90 days plus the probation. I think this should be the standard for all of the nonviolent defendants from January 6th, a few months in jail, a couple years of probation, you know, a decent amount of community service. I think that would act as a deterrent. So we'll see what happens. Like I said, I'll keep you guys posted on all of this and this whole split sentence thing. But um, I think this was fair and just for for the part that he played. So anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and listening. Take care. I'll talk with you soon.